of lying spirits. Beware of lying spirits. Beware of lying spirits. Um, the Avian, the thing of it is this. Um, we're living in an age, uh, we're living at a time where literally uh, everybody declares that they're safe. Um, I saw some things uh, the past few weeks of uh, people who I know uh, their life is not even attempting to mirror that of godliness uh, are declaring to be men and women of God. And uh, it really bothers me to a degree because if a person is not stable in uh, what they know, what they believe, and who they are, uh, they could find themselves falling prey uh, really to a lying spirit. Uh, so much goes on in the world. Minister Black and I were talking for mm. a piece the other day, even yesterday, uh, about uh, various leaders, you know, uh, within the kingdom at large that uh, while they're good people, mm. um, really aren't living a life that is uh, matching to their call. Uh, Paul tells us in Ephesians 4 and 1 uh, that we walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. Uh, so being that there is, in fact, a vocation on our lives as believers, whether that, no matter what the title is, the vocation is that of a believer, uh, we have a responsibility to God to live and to do and to be uh, who he desires for us to be. Wow. And a lot of times when we don't live that, whether it's us or whether it's others, uh, when that's not being lived, we're actually falling prey uh, to a lying spirit. Um, let's start this way. Uh, let's go to 1 John chapter 4. And then I'll come to, we'll try to end up in second in 1 Kings 22 before the night is over. Uh, but I think it's imperative for us to start off here. 1 John 4. Uh, looking at the first six verses of 1 John uh, chapter 4. John, the beloved, uh, hmm. The disciple who, you know, leaned on Jesus' bosom at the time of the Last Supper. You know, the disciple who, in fact, uh, was the last, if we will, one of the last disciples to actually die. Uh, when John concluded his gospel, in John chapter 21, you know, um, Jesus is talking to Peter. He's telling Peter, he says, you know, listen, you just follow me, you know, uh, it's going to come a time in your life, Peter, where people are going to lead you by the hand. Uh, and he was speaking of the type of death that Peter would die. Peter, in his inquisitive nature, Minister Black, he looks at John and he says, well, what about him? Mm. And uh, Jesus <laughs> says, uh, was it, what is it to you if uh, he doesn't die at all? Uh, I'm talking about you right now, Peter. So John, according to the custom, if you do any history on the death of the apostles, uh, while he did die in exile, uh, on the Isle of Patmos, it was considered that he didn't die until around about A.D. 80, uh, which was about 80 years after Jesus had come to the earth. So understanding Jesus walked on the earth, if you will, for, you know, for 30 years, 33 years. So you look at another 40 to 50 years that John was alive after that. He was known as being the longest lived of the original uh, apostles. Uh, John, a man who, uh, digging his black, was a very loving guy. It was the same John that, and Jesus is on the cross, bro Williamson, he looks down at John and he tells him, you know, uh, son, behold thy mother. Uh, mother, behold thy son. Jesus transfers ownership of his mother uh, over unto John. This same John uh, that was with Jesus, part of the inner three. Uh, this man that had such insight and connection, intimacy, if you will, in a pure form with Jesus Christ, is the one, Sister Diaviana, that begins this particular passage, 1 John chapter 4. This guy, with all this insight, all this wisdom, all this connection to Jesus, his words to us are, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Verse 2, 1 John chapter 4. Hereby know, we, know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. 
and even now already is in the world. Is it in the world? Verse 4, very familiar and quoted scripture. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. I'm going to stop at verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So tonight we're going to attempt to get some understanding about being aware, being on alert, if you will, of lying spirits. Uh, John Starr, as we just read, he tells us, Minister Black, to uh, not believe everything that we see, but to try that which we see by the Spirit. Uh, it's easy for me to teach it. I think it's a little more interesting if you tell me, uh, what does anybody, I'm talking to whomever wants to, to breathe the answer tonight, uh, what does that mean? How does one try the Spirit? Uh, by, by praying and seeking the Lord. Okay. Um, and asking God to reveal whether this person is who they say they are. Okay. Yes. All right. Praying, seeking the Lord, mm -hmm. asking for the Lord to reveal it. That's excellent. Oh, that's great. Uh, anybody else? Anything else? Any more? Mm. That's it. Uh, discernment. That's, that's, that's it. Discerning. Being able to tap into the portion of you that is spiritual. And when I tap into the portion of me, Sister Williamson, that is spiritual, what's in me ought to agree with you. If what's in me does not agree with you, the problem is with one of us. Mm -hmm. That's good. Either I'm janky right. or you're janky. Mm -hmm. If there is not an agreement, there has to be somebody that's off somewhere. Wow. So I try a spirit, well, what does that mean? Okay, I give y'all this one all the time, and if anybody continues to listen to me for years and years to come, if you can't quote no other scripture, you can be able to quote this, Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That, that's, that's it's so easy, but that's, that's the scripture, Sister Williamson, that I live by. Um, the gifts and calling of God, it says, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That lets me know that no matter how I am, no matter how nasty I am, no matter how uh, impure I am, no matter how conniving I am, if I've been gifted, my gift will always work. Wow. Yeah. If I have been gifted, Sister Lipscomb, to prophesy, I can be the dirtiest, grimiest dude, but still be an accurate prophet. Wow. Because I'm gifted. Now, the problem with the church, Bo Williamson, is we get so enamored by the accuracy yes, sir. that we overlook the jankiness of his life. Yeah, that's real. So this is what I'm saying. We can't just hear a word and go gung-ho over what we heard. Right. We've got to actually try that word, not by what we heard, but by our spirit. Oh, God, teach him. Um, uh, I can, uh, bro Barnes, good to see you tonight, man, uh, and you too, uh, my good friend. Uh, <laughs> I can be just as uh, gifted a singer. Mm -hmm. I mean, can sing the Whoa. heavens yes, sir. into the room yeah. and still cuss you out, still outsmoke you, mm. still outdrink you, still outclub you, but I still can sing because I'm gifted. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, when you say, well, Pastor, I heard Sister Jody, and she sang, and everybody in the room fell out in the spirit. Pastor Hinton's going to say, well, I'm not moved by Sister Jody's gift. I'm looking at the demon in Sister Jody's life. Wow. So, not everything is going to fly at Bethel Temple Faith Church just because you're gifted. Mm -hmm. I went to school for this, Pastor. I know how to teach the kids. Yeah, but you're an abuser. Mm. Wow, you're ugly. So if my spirit is not agreeing with what's in you, with your gift itself, you'll continue to sit there. That's right. So either two, one of the things will happen, brother Williamson. Either you're gonna change, or you're gonna leave. Yes, sir. 
And guess what? Pastor Hinton cool either way. Because if you leave, that's, that's a little burden in my life. But if you stay, that means you're going to change. So then your gift, according to the word of the Lord, will then make room for you. That's good, sir. That's the word. But it can't make room for you if you still janky. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's just my word, bro. Barnes, you got to work with me, man. Uh, you know, if you're still, you know, dimbling and dabbling, that gift is not going to go nowhere. You don't lose the gift. I'm, I'm going to go a step deeper. It says the gifts and calling. Mm -hmm. So, if I've been called to be a pastor, and I have by his grace, just because I'm called don't mean my spirit's right. Mm, that's real. Teach us. I'm trying. Yes, sir. Because we get so, you know, we get so fickle over a gift and a title. Well, he's an uh, archbishop so-and-so. And I've got to try the archbishop by what's in him. And if what's in me don't agree with what's in him, there can't be no fellowship. Mm -hmm. I got to try the spirit to see if he's really of God. So I'm very, I'm very, you know, I'm very careful. Two ways. One, I'm very particular uh, who I'll allow to pray for me. Now, if you're praying for me on your own, I can't control that. Uh, but to say you're going to come lay hands on me? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> I got to know you. Uh, you know, I don't care how many members you got at your church. And you saying I can transfer this anointing on you by the laying on of hands. Yeah, but you ain't telling me about the spirits you're transferring with that anointing. Mm. You ain't telling me about the lust you still got. Y'all ain't talking to me. It's real. Uh, so, so, so now, Pastor Hinton goes to the conference, and, you know, this guy that's the leader, he's got 50,000 members. And I'm so moved by the fact he's gifted and he's called to 50,000 people. And I want that so bad that I go right in the line and I let uh, this guy lay hands on me. Mm. All right? Uh, before I left, bro Williamson, I ain't want nobody but my wife. Uh, but when I came back, mm. I want everybody. Yeah. Listen, I don't just want the women. I want the men too. Oh, I got mm. That's real, sir. Because I didn't try the spirit mm. of the person that was imparting in me. Come on, sir. Scripture even tells us, lay hands suddenly on no man, mm. or else you become partaker of his sins. That's mm. word. So when I'm so fickle that because this guy has a following, and I'm going to let him just lay his hands on me. If I'm not really discerning him by the spirit to see, you know, okay, let me see if you really, if I'm not doing that, I'm setting myself up behind a gift. Mm -hmm. Beware tonight uh, of lying, lying spirits. All right. Uh, he says, be, be, believe not every spirit. Still going back to verse one. I know I read one through six. But try, test them, put them on a little fire, uh, you know. Talk to them a little bit. Hear what their conversation is about. Talk to them outside of the church. Yeah, teach. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, let me see how you talk at the football game mm. before you lay hands on me. Yeah. Let me see how you talk at home before you lay hands on me. Let me see how you treat your wife before you lay hands on me. Yeah. Because if I'm not trying you, you're giving me stuff that I can't even handle right now. You're putting me in a worse space by me not trying that spirit. Mm -hmm. So he says, do this to see if they're of God because there are many, 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 many false prophets. Oh, God. False prophets. I, I, I'm going to tell on Sister Balkman. She don't mind. Uh, I should have got her permission before, but uh, I'll tell her later that I told her on her. Okay, um, <laughs> Sister Bought Knight, the other week, uh, she came to the altar, all right? Sister Bought Knight came to the altar. And this is not for any uh, praise to come to me, all right? This has nothing to do with me. I'm just a vessel. Sister Bought Knight comes to the altar. Now, while I was preaching about two or three weeks ago, I'm preaching. As I'm preaching, I saw on Sister Bought Knight a pain in her eye. Mm -hmm. I saw it just as clear as I'm looking at you, Brother Barnes. And I said, well, Lord, I ain't supposed to do that right now. Well, I'm preaching. Let me finish my message. 
Jesus said, I'm, I'm going to get there, you know. And so uh, after, after I preached, Sister Bart Knight had come up for prayer. And um, I said, Sister Bart Knight, I'm going to tell you what I see. I said, there, there's a pain that's almost like a pressure in your eye. I said, it's not your eye. It's like behind the eye. I can see it so clear. I said, if I could really just like cut your head open, <laughs> I could show you exactly where this pressure is. And I said, Sister Bart Knight, do you have any pressure right there? Sister Bart Knight said, no. He said, Pastor, I don't have none. I said, okay. Now, this is the thing about Pastor Hinton, bro. Wait a second. Two things. If the Lord ain't telling me nothing, Pastor Hinton ain't going to say nothing. Two, I don't have to impress nobody. So I'm good. But I'm saying, okay, Sister Bart Knight, I know what I'm looking at. So let me just pray because I know what I'm looking at. On Monday, two days ago, Sister Bart Knight sent me a text. Pastor, uh, I just want you to know, I woke up this morning. And that pressure you was talking about was in my eye. So much so that my eyes start swelling, doing crazy stuff. I got conjunctivitis or something. But I went to the doctor, you know, and, but I just want to let you know what you saw mm -hmm. was right. Amen. <laughs> now, a novice says, let me not say nothing else in the name of the Lord because I missed it. I know I ain't missed it, yes, sir. Because I knew what I saw. Stay your ground. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm going to tell you about a false prophet. A false prophet is going to adjust his prophecy to show his inaccuracy. Right. Y'all should have wrote that down. Y'all should have wrote that down. A false prophet will adjust his prophecy to correct his inaccuracy. I'll say that again. That was God breathed. I ain't never even heard that before in my awesome. life to right now. A false prophet, Tony Jr., you need to hear this at the age of 14. A false prophet will adjust his prophecy to correct or justify, if you will, his inaccuracy. A true prophet going to speak what he see. He going to speak what he see. He going to speak what he hear. Whether it's there or not, that's, on, that's between God and the person. I'm just trying to, if, if, I'm not, if I'm not speaking to you right now, this is also some good teaching too. If the word is not to you right now, when well, you know you got a real man or woman of God, it's got to be prophetic which means it's coming. Mm -hmm. If it's a noun, it's more of a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. Okay? Uh, God, I, let, let, me, let, let me do this. All right. A word of knowledge. Let me give you an example. A word of knowledge is, uh, if I speak a word to the Williamsons uh, concerning their marriage, all right? Um, specifically, if it's something that would more so be almost what one would consider to be general. Okay? Uh, my, my word is related to what I know about them. I know that they're married. So what I'm speaking, even though it's from God, it's not necessarily prophetic because it's God impressing me on what I already know about them. A word of wisdom for the Williamsons is I have no clue. I don't know them from a general standpoint. But God will speak something that's relative to them that they know I don't know. So it's got to be a word of wisdom because it's in their name. Mm -hmm. If it's not in the name and God speaks, it's prophetic, which means it's for a time to come. Mm -hmm. Now, only God can determine what that length of time is. Sometimes it's, you know, quick. Sister Bart night, you know, three days, five days. Sometimes it's years. Sometimes it's months, you know. But the truth of the matter is this. If it's true prophecy, it's going to come to pass. It's stuff happening to me now that was prophesied to me 15 years ago. I couldn't say because it ain't happening in 15 years that the person missed it. They were right on it. It was just prophetic. And then God will allow prophecy to meet the person where they are. Okay? Now, he may not necessarily do the ball not like that again. But she needed to know that about her pastor for the rest of her life. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. So God said, let me expedite this thing so she can understand he not just making up stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, he might speak something else to her in days to come. That may take a few years to get here. But she'll always be able to go back to the fact of, but I remember when. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Amen. Beware of lying. Okay. When, when, when you hear the word beware, uh, what, what is that? 
Be cautious. Cautious. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Be alerted. Be alerted. Yeah. Uh, give, give me, give me something else though, because all that's good. I don't even know exactly what I'm looking for, because all that was good. But let me just hear some more. Uh, Warning. Keep watch. Danger. Warning. Warning was. Keep watch. Danger. danger. Stranger danger. danger. I like that. Yeah. Uh, old school with the kids. Stranger danger. Uh, Stay sober. Stay sober. Mm -hmm. Oh God. That's what I was listening for. <laughs> okay. Uh, help me. Help me, Sister Williamson. Uh, tell me what that means. I know what it means, but I, I just want you to say it, and I'm going to back you. I'm going to work with you. Stay sober. Um, um. <laughs> I put you on the spot. I, know. I hate doing that. Stay sober. Just, you know, stay, like what everybody else says, stay alert. Alert. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, you ain't got to go no deeper. That, that's okay. the key. That, that's the key. <laughs> because check this out, bro, Barnes. Um, when I'm sober, that means my senses mm -hmm. are heightened. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, clear. That's right. Yes, but but if I'm if I'm not sober, then stuff might happen to me that I would have caught if I was sober. Mm. All right, uh, a man that's drunk, okay, uh, he's intoxicated. Mm -hmm. He may stumble because the chair is right there. Mm -hmm. Had he been sober, he wouldn't have walked into the chair mm -hmm. because his senses would have been heightened. Mm -hmm. But when I'm drunk, I'm seeing three chairs when it's only one. Mm. <laughs> So I got to tell my mind, don't walk over the middle one. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the crazy part. I've never been drunk a day in my life. So that's the end of it. Okay, so <laughs> the point is, when I'm sober, my senses are alerted to what's going on. So if I'm in the midst of somebody that's using their gift, and I'm not sober, then I'm going to be overly impressed with the gift I'm going to tell everybody I know, oh my God, I just heard this prophet that I, like, I've never heard before. He's the greatest since sliced bread. Okay, well, let's go check him out. And I'm sitting there, Brother Barnes, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, he might be an accurate prophet. But you know, he's still, you know, he's still changing. Mm. Yes, sir. That's the thing I want us to get as a church, not to be moved by the gift or the calling. But we got to be able to discern the life. You're not going to necessarily know all that there is about this person mm -hmm. upon meeting him. But if the Holy Ghost is in you, which I believe he is, there'll be something that you'll just be like, I don't know. I can't grab my finger on you, but, you know, he was good. But something just ain't settling about this guy. That's the Lord telling you, uh-uh, don't, you know, don't fall pray for the gift. All right, so we got to be well. Be on alert. Be sober. Uh, stranger danger. Uh, be, you know, be, be uh, aware of what's going on. Because everybody, let, let's go here, um, uh, 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 Matthew 7. Uh, I, we, we'll just read that. That's going to be saying. Matthew 7, uh, verses 21 through uh, 23. Matthew, Matthew 7. 21 through uh, 23. Teach them beware of lying spirits. All right, Matthew 7, mm -hmm. verses 21 through 23 says this. Uh, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Mm. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I, this is Jesus talking, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Mm -hmm. So if anybody ever says, I'll pass the teaching, y'all wrong, you take them right there to Matthew 7. Jesus said, in, in that day, when we all see the Lord, and we're standing before the judgment seat, and Jesus handing out judgment through the direction of the Lord Jesus, through the direction of God, handing out judgment down through his son Jesus Christ. They're going to say, these false prophets, but Lord, I prophesied in your name. In your name. I did. Mm -hmm. I followed all the steps. I did in your name. I worked miracles in your name. I cast out demons in your name. You used me to do this. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, yeah, but I don't know you. You work mm -hmm. iniquity. You're a false. You're a phony. You're a fraud. Get out of my face. So just because God uses a person 
does not mean God is pleased with a person. Just because he's called a person doesn't mean he's pleased with the person. So the question then becomes, well, Pastor, how do I know who I'm supposed to listen to? How do I know who I'm supposed to follow? Just like I said in the beginning, what's in you got to resonate with what's in the person you're attempting to follow. If there's no resonating there, you need to really pray, God, am I making the right move? Uh, you know, is it me or is it him? Or is it us? And, and show me what I need to see so that I'm not wasting my time or wasting my life. And the problem is, Brother Williamson, people in leadership have grown so lax in our fear for God that people just do whatever these days. Amen. They don't care. You know, I'll be a pastor, but mm, I want to be gay. So I'm going to just be gay and I'm going to be a pastor. Ain't nobody going to sit me down because this is my church. Then you got fickle deacons that's agreeing with the gay pastor. Wow. No fear. I personally, Brother Barnes, would be terrified mm -hmm. if I know I ain't living right to stand up here and to teach and to preach. Because this is the thing. God's going to hold me accountable for what I'm doing to y'all. Right. Hmm. <laughs> so ain't no way in the world. I'm going to come to you black. Ain't no way in the world. I'm going to chance it. If ain't nobody right in here, I promise you, I'm going to be right. Because if I'm not right, I'm going to sit down with you. And we're going to all look at the podium. Wait, <laughs> see, see, the problem, my Pastor, is they, um, the, the fickle deacons are still in love with the gift. Yeah. So they're holding on to the word. That's it. it. He's only telling me what the word says. And, yeah, he can't And he's, do <laughs> he's dodging yeah. the ones that speak about his issue. Right. Yeah, but what he's saying, they agree with. Yeah, and that's good. That's good. That, and that's, that's what's happening. That's the problem. They, 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 they preach the same message. You know, they, they can preach it about, you know, uh, you know, giving. Mm -hmm. They can preach to you about, you know, paying your tithes and your offering. They got that down mm -hmm. pat. You know, when we start dipping over into the living right yes, side sir. of the word. Come on. Yeah, I don't really go there too often. Yeah, you, you know, stay away from that's it. Old yes, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. That's that's old doctrine. Uh, we mm -hmm. we got to uh, use some new leaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh not everyone that's naming the name of the Lord right. is on the Lord's side. Yes, sir. All right. Um I should have told y'all to keep your finger in 1 John 4 because I want to, I got to highlight this point in verse number 6 and uh, then we, we, we're going to go over to, uh, to 1 Kings 22 as the Lord said to say. All right, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse number 6. I got to highlight these two things. I know I try to give you some scholarly stuff uh, so this will be the scholarly portion of our time tonight. Uh, it says, wait, uh, it says, we are of God, uh, verse 6 of 1 John 4, he that knoweth God heareth us. All right. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit.